Hi everyone, um, you may notice I'm the Brit in the room, so welcome and um, thanks for coming and, and listening to me talk for half an hour about the journey that the Rank Group have gone on um, and the transformation that we've been through and also how it's changed in its life cycle. So um, I'm going to take you through a little bit about the journey we've already had, but also what we've kind of learned and how we're evolving moving forward. So just a quick introduction to myself, because I'm sure no one of you know who's, who I am. I don't know anyone else in the room. Um, the Rank Group is a, is a quite large organisation in the UK. We're a gambling company. So um, we own the largest footprint of, on, of retail clubs in the UK, about 120 clubs. And they're split behind, across bingo, which is quite a British thing, um, and um, casinos. So obviously everyone's aware of a casino. And our mantra is to excite and entertain our customers. I work solely in the online area, so we're looking at using technology analytics to drive great experience for our customers. Um, over the last kind of two years, we had, um, we've built an entirely new tech stack. We've changed basically every system that we had, and we've gone from not knowing who our customers were to, to where we are today, which we have a pretty good view, but we've still got a long way to go. And before I joined Rank, I was actually in Australia, so I'm aware of a few different markets and was doing this for banks, telcos, travel, um, all industries. Um, so, and this applies to every industry, so really relevant, even if you're not in gambling like I am. Um, and before you ask later, I do not know how to play poker at all. I have no interest in it, so do not ask me the tips and tricks. I'm sure you guys are probably better than I am. Okay, so this is a quote that I use at every presentation, be it internal or external. Some of you might already know of it. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. The reason it's really important is we have to, if we're going to aim for that double-digit growth that I'm sure we're all after and our bosses will want us to achieve, we've got to do something differently to achieve it. The other thing is you're going you're to have a few fails, so it's like a slots machine, so you put your money in, you ring a few bells, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, and I think you have to be prepared to lose sometimes because that's the reality. You're not going to get it right every time, and you have to keep on reiterating as you go. The thing I like most about this quote as well is, um, I'm sure everyone's got an opinion who actually said it. Um, my opinion is Albert Einstein, but um, I don't know where that came from. But what I really like is that it's also highlighting that data accuracy has been a problem with us for a long time. So um, yeah, who actually said this is still debated. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to talk about the word transformation. I think it's a word that agencies use to sell us more hours. Um, sorry for the agencies in the room. We've all had an agency come in and pitch the, age, uh, the transformation project that they're going to give you. Um, and the reason I have a problem with it is it implies that at some point you're going to be transformed, that by going through transformation, you will be transformed and you'll be ready to go. It's basically saying you're aiming for a unicorn, this mag magical creature that just doesn't exist. I mean, that's pretty awesome, but it, it's, it's unattainable, and it makes it a very scary word for us to go into. So... Transformation is a big, big, bold word. Um, what we need to think about instead is a racehorse. So you've got to train, you've got to invest, you've got to fuel the right, uh, feed the horse the right fuel, and you're going to have to breed from it for it to continue its life cycle. So forget the unicorn, forget transformation, focus on the racehorse. So I'm ashamed to say this is me at Digital Velocity in London last year, and my my presentation was digital transformation in a year. I'm hugely embarrassed to say that because it was so unattainable and it was a bit braggy, really. Um, what we ended up doing, which was a transformation, was our transformation of technology and analytics in a year. But transform transformation is so much more than that. So what I'm going to do now is take you through the story I told you know, eight months ago, and then I'm going to take you through the story that I'm telling today. So going back to the original story, and some of these are still the same slides, because um, I, I, I went through a, a space theme for some reason. So this is Apollo 13. You all know how this is going to go. Um, Tom Hanks is in there with the greatest intentions. We had the best technology, the best people, the best capability, and we, we go off into space to, to discover new things. So at the Rank Group, we went off with bringing in the best technology, the best capability. We bought Telium, we bought Adobe Analytics, everything. Um, but we didn't really know what we were going to find. So this is our site a couple of years ago. It's really ugly. I still hate it. Um, <laughs> it's okay to say if you hate your website. I, it's an interview question I was asking. If anyone says they like it, they don't get the job. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> so 
<laughs> I'm quite mean. Um, so we have no idea about who clicked on what game. We had no idea who was registering. We had no idea who people were before they became customers. Our whole business was obsessed with customers. They didn't think about prospects or visitors or individuals. We used um, A-B testing tools as a CMS. So at 1.60% of our website was hosted through A-B testing tool. Uh, this was before I was there, by the way. Um, a lot of things were based on hunches, a lot of decisions based on hunches. The problem with the gambling industry, if anyone's in it, everyone has been in the gambling industry forever. So they know what they're talking about, I don't doubt that, but there is no data back up in terms of why they're making decisions, particularly when it comes to visitors that they don't know anything about. We still have many of those going on. And there was a, lot of lack, there was a, a huge lack of trust in data, so there was lots of data all over the place. No one really knew what the truth was. Um, so a, a bit of a kind of... Uh, unknown space that we were in when we were going on that Apollo 13 mission. Um, so, seen from, uh, from Apollo 13, so we basically had that situation, many disaster recovery situations where we had no idea what to do, but we had to fix it. We had few resources, we had few bits of tools and capability available to us, but we had to mash them together and find a solution. So, you know, many of the problems we had was data wasn't matching, so we brought in Adobe and, you know, it doesn't match our financial data, so I don't like it. Or, you know, why do I need audience stream? Because I've already got our single customer view over here, which isn't a single customer view. So lots and lots of problems and, you know, trying to change their culture at the same time. But we did managed to get through and we built a new team. So we built a multifaceted team, really small still, but we have designers and developers and analysts and everything. We also brought in the great tools around us. So Telium, Adobe Analytics, and more recently Optimizely and, and a bunch of other ones around that, um, ObservePoint. Um, and we kind of have a really nice view of the people and the tools that we need to, to be successful. And we did all that in two years, or oh, 18 months, I have to say. So huge amount of investment, a huge amount of change very quickly. Um, but we did land, as the great Apollo 13 story does tell us, so we did land safe and sound. Um, and in that time, we've launched 100 new experiences. We made 5.5 million pounds uplift in revenue from those experiences. And we had a 600% ROI from the technology that we invested in. And, you know, moving forward, our vision is something like the Mars Curiosity mission, which this is to kind of automate, innovate, and discover the unknown. So we have a view on what's on Mars, but we don't know exactly what's there, and that's kind of the situation we're in today as well, and I think many of you in the room are the same. So, and how we're doing this, I know you've just seen this slide. Um, we have invested in the whole um, Universal Data Hub, and the view is that we're going to have a single... Um, I was about to say single customer view. It's not a single customer view. It's a single view of our, of our data so we can make real-time decisions and put the right, cust uh, the right message to the right customer. It's bringing the decision-making in one place. You know, even, even last week, I'm finding different tools and making decisions. We're trying to bring it all in to the, the Universal Data Hub. So it all sounds great. So we landed our Apollo 13 and all fine. So why am I here today to tell you what else we didn't know? Um, a couple of things we learned. So people, technology, process. We'd focused entirely on the technology. And we, we forgot or didn't invest equal time in people and process. I'm going to talk you through some of the key learnings that I wanted to share around those. So what you also need to consider. So first, invest in people. Um, we, we did some of this, and we don't do it anymore. We've brought on tools without anyone to look after them. So we brought in um, Audience Stream, and we had someone looking after Audience Stream, but what we didn't have was buying from other teams, and they didn't have this skill set to use it. So our marketing teams, they, they had the idea and the intent. They didn't have the skill sets to fully um, get on board to, to use it. Um, so we've then gone back, and we've really invested in training and education, and we've gone through a few different models. You know, we'll just push the information to you. We'll try and self-serve. We've tried a few different methodologies, and they'll all work. It just depends on your team. But do not buy a technology if you do not have someone to look after it. Please, number one. <laughs> um, become a salesperson. So this is selling Tupperware back in the day. Um, I used to be in sales, actually, but it, you have to carry on selling. It is relentless. Even now, I'm still selling what web analytics is. You'd think a company like ours would want it, but they, it's, it's only just last week I had someone actually come to me and ask me, hey, Kerry, could Adobe answer this question? That was the first time in two years. 
So you have to carry on selling. And again, you'll have to do it in different ways. OK, the journey never stops. I know I'm painting a bleak picture here. I'm sorry. Um, the journey never stops, right? So you're going to uh, uh, climb over one mountain. You're going to get to the top, but then there's another one behind you. If anyone's done the Great Wall of China, you see one pillar, and you're almost there, and you have to carry on going. It doesn't stop. Um, and, and I think as companies evolve, as new capability comes in, you, it's, it, the journey will not stop. So we're launching new apps, so we have to go right back to the beginning to implement new capability early on. OK? So I was here on Monday, and I saw the news about the Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Um, they took it to the extreme, but you should all speak in the same voice. Um, my recommendation to them would be speak in the same voice, but personalize it to that individual. But you know, making sure that the conversation you're having to your stakeholders, be it internal stakeholders, but your customers, is consistent. So if you're going through change, if you're bringing in new technology that, that you need to get other people's buy-in to, you need to make sure you and your whole team and everyone else has a consistent voice in terms of what you're actually selling. OK. So process. Um, you know what you know. You know what you don't know. But you don't know what you don't know. I know that's a bit of a word, word script. Um, you, you need to figure it out what you don't know. Um, things are always changing. They're always evolving. But you need to really push to go and find the stuff you're not aware of, because it will come up and, and, and bite you in the end. Um, GDPR um, is, is obviously one of those. We've got new legislation coming in. No one's still exactly clear what's going on. No one's still exactly clear how it's going to affect them. But you have to carry on pushing to find out. Um, otherwise, it will become an issue. So in the gambling industry, we have a, an issue which other people may have, where if someone excludes himself from gambling, we have to respect that and, and keep a register that they should no longer be gambling with us. But with GDPR in, and they have the right to be forgotten, which one trumps the other? So we're looking into ways of, like, that we, we can work around that with our gambling commission and GDPR. But you know, there are things that you won't know, and you've just got to push through and find them. And, and furthermore than that, unpeel the onion and be prepared to cry. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I have this many, many days. Um, you know, you've got to go and find those problems and, and uncover them because they're not going to go away. If you're about to embark on bringing in a new capability, think about every possibility of, of um, dependencies and find out what the issues might be. We brought in Audience Stream uh, about a year and a bit ago. Um, and then we uncovered that the data science environment, environment for producing models wasn't up to scratch. So they brought in a new data science environment. There were data integrity issues, so we've had to go and figure those out. And what we found out last week when I was in my prepared to cry moment was that the, the connector to pass the data from our, our data science environment out was broken as well. So those issues are going to come up. I tr tell you now, there will be another one next week, I'm sure of it. But just try and unpeel them early on as possible and just be prepared for them. So controversial one set at a tech conference, but stop buying technologies. Um, there is literally a piece of technology for everything. Um, I'm sure we all get calls about different things. There are unique selling points for every technology, and they're all really valid. But think about investing in some really key tools that you guys need. Invest in the essential ones that are going to help grow you further, and then stop, and then focus on connecting those together. Um, what will happen if you don't is you're bringing a technology, and two years later, oh, it doesn't work, take it out and replace it with another one. That's an expensive habit to get into. So, you know, we, we had one where we've brought in a central um, campaign manager for emails and communications. And again, a couple of weeks ago, we uncovered that customers are still getting sent emails from three other different tools. And in fact, we don't have a view on all the emails that are being sent out to customers in different scenarios. So again, we're having to go through this whole process to figure out that and then, <laughs> and then bring them all together into one place. But, you know, we, you can easily get into the habit of buying more and more tools to fix more and more problems, but actually just invest in connecting them. Get your architect involved, get a gap analysis done, what still needs to be connected, and do that before you move on. Make it mainstream. Um, just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should, because you need to think about how people are going to use it moving forward. I'm really pleased I was going to bring this slide up. I was worried someone was going to walk in with a Google Glass, but I can't see anyone. Um, you know, Google Glass was a great idea, and there are many other capabilities that are available today, but the market might just not be ready for it, and you have to be prepared for that. And I think it was talked about earlier in, um, in the talks this morning. 
you need to make sure that a customer is going to want to use it and change their behavior. You can't just force it on them. So listen to what your customers are doing. That tunnel vision of, you know, you want your um, confirmation bias, was it? Be really honest with yourself. Have I got the right information that is telling me the customer actually needs this? If the answer is, I'm not sure, it's a no. So do not go ahead just because you can do something, just don't do it. Need to make sure you're listening to the customer and also think about how they're gonna use it moving forward. So bring in the tool, done, but how is it gonna change behavior in the long run? That all needs to be part of the process when you're going through any sort of transformation or change. And finally, um, we talk a lot about data and technology, but we can't forget the customer, what's right for them. So going back to the Google Glass, is that meeting a customer need? Again, if the answer is no, don't do it. So we've had a lot of debates around single customer views, and we're looking at how we can actually get the right view of the right customer in the right place, but also actioning that information. So we might be gathering lots of information, but are we actually doing anything with it? Are we listening to their feedback from the call center? Are we um, passing the right message to them to, to when they call, they know who we are, they know who they are, we know who they are, sorry. So making sure you're listening to the customer and doing what's right for them. One thing, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not a gambler, I have little interest in it, and therefore I'm, I've got to be really careful when I'm making decisions around our customer. I have to remember that I'm not the target audience and that I need to put myself in their shoes. And one thing I thought I had really, um, really recently was having a customer chair in any meeting. So have an empty chair and pretend the customer's there. And when you're making a decision, think about what would they say. If they say it's the wrong thing, really listen to them. So what would I tell myself if I could go back? Spend equal time on the people and process. It's really easily forgotten. Um, when I was back at an agency, we used to say you should spend about double the amount on the process and the onboarding than, than the tool itself. Um, but it's really important that you have the right people, you're able to change their behavior so it's relevant, and you've also got the processes to make these things mainstream and work effectively. Focus on the consumer. Now that consumer might be your internal stakeholders, or it might be the actual customer, the end customer, but think about what they need to make a change. So you might be implying a change of behavior. So if you're putting a new privacy setting up, how are you gonna change their behavior in the right way? If you're talking to stakeholders that are bringing on a new tool, how are you gonna change their behavior so they are as passionate about the technology as you are? And finally, train the horse rather than aim for the unicorn, but just do it with a bit of sparkle. And then finally, my kind of passing notes are continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Um, and this one's definitely by Mark Twain. Um, you know, we, I, I've painted a bit of a bleak picture here, but actually you've just got to accept that you've got to push ahead, you've got to uncover problems, deal with them, get the right people in and press, press ahead. There is no point trying to aim for this perfection, which I know other people have talked about today. Um, and so you can move forward and continuous improvement and a testing culture is really important to do that. And the people in the process will help you achieve that. And that's all from me. Thank you.